is up? Welcome to the Stack Guy Show, episode number 22. Uh, joining me tonight is a multiple-time No Prep Kings Invitational winner, Justin Swanstrom. What's up, man? What's on, guys? Hey, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, what do you What do you guys What do you got going on right now, man? What are you up to? Uh, I'm in the shop right now. Uh, it's probably basically where I live at when I'm not at the racetrack. Um, so I was just shipping out some merch. I was uh, um, coming up with some ideas, editing some videos to keep content pushed out and keep rolling forward. Holy shit, we got a lot of comments already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to keep going. Um, so I saw a couple of days ago you were uh, you were out testing with Kelly. What was that all about? What, Kelly came down and wanted to test out her new screw blower or, or what? Yes. Um, so Kelly has switched over to a screw blower. Not a lot of people knew about it um going off to the end of last year and she has never been behind nothing like that so uh um Dwayne had asked my dad and my dad asked me um if I would get in the car shake it down and make sure everything is 100 good and then we would put her inside the car she is very much capable of being able to do it but she just felt co more comfortable if I got inside there and uh, I did I made three passes in it um the first pass it kind of bunny hopped off the track. Uh, second pass, we uh, took it out about to 3.30. And then the third pass, I made a full lick. Um, ran pretty good. And then we stuffed Callie in there. And uh, she she drove it like a champ. She only made one hit. We loaded it up. She's going to fly back down again. We're going to go testing with her. But um, she's uh, she's all good now. She did her first burnout. She uh, was able to do her first throttle wop um, and then be able to make her first pass. So everything was good on her end. Um, and uh, I was happy for her. I was, I was actually pretty excited to see her go through and do that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and Kelly had joined your team last year, I believe. Um, yes, talk about talk about having Kelly as a teammate and, and how that goes. Um, hold up, I was just sharing over on Facebook real quick. Um, so uh, I I started up Swan Gang um, in 2019. I started in my bedroom. I was I've always been a part of racing. But uh, I wanted to start up something and in 2019 when I will kind of jump a little bit. That's when I started with Street Outlaws and I knew uh, I knew what my goals were going into it. Um, at the time, nobody really knew me from the street racing side and uh, the TV show side. And I had goals moving forward. And I said within within three years, I wanted my own team. I wanted to be a captain and I wanted to keep doing that. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the journey and everything to get into that. But for the most part, I got the opportunity. I started up a team. Uh, I had already had Swan Gang built up, branded. Everything was working good. I said uh, we were trying to come up with a team name to, to be able to be on the show. And I literally pitched it to Discovery, Pilgrim, and them. And I, I said, why don't we just name it Swan Gang? It's already established. People like it. People that are going to be on the team, they're going to grow with my fan base as it is. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. And we did. We launched it. And uh, – uh, first person I went and asked was Callie. Uh, she was in the future class, and I, I do think um, they did a, they did amazing. They they ran well. They won races. They went to the finals. Um, she she would have she would have got up in the the uh, invitational class by her own. But I do feel that that the team deal did help her out a little bit. So by her accept, accepting it, and me and her have been friends. We've raced a long time. Her uh, I raced with her dad. Um, and uh, my dad and her dad's known each other a long time, but her accepting it to be on Swan Gang, it, it made it, I feel like it made it a little bit more easier for her to be able to. Uh, they still had to put in work, but it was still uh, it was a stepping stone in the right direction. Um, so she joined it, and we just ran the rest of the year. I mean, I had a lot of people from other teams that hit me up, hey, I want to come join your team, or I want to do this, but um, I'm big into that. How how my dad raised me, and uh, with like even the construction work that we done. If somebody else has a job somewhere else and we're in the same uh, same line of work, I would never try to go and try to steal somebody from that job. So it's the same thing with the team deal. Like I told them, I said, if you and your team have a falling out something, maybe we could talk about it later down the road, but I'm not just going to come around um, and just try to take people from other teams. So Callie was the one that was able to join, and I said, you know what, we'll just stick with a two-person team um, until the end of the year and figure out what we're going to do for next year. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, and you got you both y'all did really well. You obviously had a great season. Callie did well as she made it to the final at the last race, I believe. Yep. Um y'all had a good season. Um, 
So you guys were out testing Cali tonight, but what, uh, what's up with prenup? What's the status of prenup right now? Um, it's getting wired right now. So uh, it's up in North Carolina. Um, it's getting wired. They just called me today. Um, they sent me some photos. Um, I got some stuff that I'm going to post up. Uh, the updates of the car, the, the new look of it. Um, it does have a different look to it. Um, and then uh, once it gets done wiring, it'll probably be, probably be next week or something when I can go pick it up. Then I got to take it down. I got to get all the body work done, get it wrapped, and then we'll be out testing with that car. Good thing about Callie's deal, it's the same setup that I got. So anything that we're learning off of her deal, we'll be able to go ahead and move it right over to, uh, to my setup as well. Nice. Um, is the plan to run prenup the whole year, most of the year? Um, it's kind of a sore subject right now. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I, I'd love to have my new car. I ain't going to lie. I mean, I've spent a lot of money to be able to have the new car, but it's not going to be ready. Uh, I've made that very clear. I'm, I'm pretty much an open book, so I have nothing to hide from anybody. Um, the new car will not be ready. And um, to be honest with you, I feel like if I'm going to put the time in to – to get prenup started and get moving forward when the new car is ready. I don't know if I'll take that risk and trying to get a new car set up and ready to go. Um, it takes a while to get a new car uh, acclimated and, and running good. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. we seen that last year, Kai switched over to a new car and I even told him, I said, man, that's, that's pretty risky to do. Um, but I understood why he had to do it and, and he did run well, but you did see towards the end where he switched cars uh, back with David Gates and shout out to David Gates for a, uh, being a team player and allowing him to do that. Um, but uh, that, that, that's the risk that you take. And so I've already made it clear that I've done switch directions. Um, I just put an ass load of money in prenup. I wasn't expecting to put that kind of money back into that car. Um, it deserves it. It's been a great car and it's worked good for me and the team, but yeah. I wasn't expecting to do it like that right now, uh, especially when I got a lot of money going out for uh, the new car side piece. Right. Um, talk about why you think it's easier because clearly you think it's easier to switch combos, which you did in the middle of a season compared to switching cars in the middle of the season. What's, why is it easier just to switch a combo up? I don't think any of it's easier. Um, <laughs> it, it's, everything's hard about it. I mean, I kind of got, I kind of lucked out. Um, my dad is a great tuner. Um, he had an idea with it. Shout out to, uh, Lee. When I started out with, uh, the screw blower setup, um, I got hooked up with Lee had him come out. He was able to kind of guide us in the right direction, make sure we weren't doing nothing wrong. And then my dad took it over. And um, every now and then we uh, will bring Lee back out. Um, if we get, you know, somewhere out in left field, or if we're just trying to maybe try something, um, same thing with like Callie's car. We just went out there this weekend. Uh, Dwayne and Callie do run a, a Brad motor. So it's a little bit different setup than mine. They just had to put a new blower, new hat. So we were just making sure. So uh, Callie and Dwayne both, Brought uh, Lee out, helped us out, got everything moving forward. Um, and then we're going to go testing again in a couple of weeks. So, uh, but uh, my dad mostly does all the tuning, but uh, it, it's just, it's difficult, man. It, uh, a car can fight you um, and especially a new car. And, and that's the reason why I had to switch dir uh, directions by trying to get side piece done. Um, when I, when I ran season four with prenup, I, I received the car two days prior to the first race. I literally, I literally went to Orlando Speed World. I made two shakedown passes. It was horrible. I then went to the first race. I had to run. I, I want to say I won first round. Yes, I did. It was in Ohio. I won first round, and then I had to run Ryan Martin second round, and I, uh, I got beat by half a car. Yep. Um, we then moved on from that race over to uh i want to say south georgia maybe i think that was the third race um somewhere i think it was south georgia um but me and my dad we, we said we got to go test we got to do something so we went and tested we figured some stuff out and then we won south georgia our third race in um so that's where uh, it was a uh, it was a good deal um but uh i i told myself this year i i running for a championship i didn't want to go through that again um my my goal was to be able to be tested be ready uh, with the setups that I have uh, moving forward, so I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna wait. And uh, prenup was the the better car of the two to be able to get ready to be able to move forward. So um, about sixty thousand dollars later, and this is where we're at. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, let's switch gears, Justin. Let's talk about what you just recently did, and that you just got back from Australia a couple of weeks ago. Uh, how was the trip, man? How was the whole trip for you there? 
Um, Australia is a very nice place. Let me go ahead and start off by saying that. Uh, it's an experience of a lifetime. Not everybody will get that experience. I don't know if I'll ever get that experience again. Um, but so it was awesome to be just invited to be able to go over there. I know a lot of people, uh, they talk shit and they say, oh, he he hasn't done nothing, blah, blah, blah. He, all he does is talk shit on the sport, blah, blah, blah. Well, I must be doing something right because I got invited to go over there. Um, but uh, and uh, at the end of the day, it's a very nice place. I will say, though, they they are different. The people are amazing, but the place as a whole, it's like the United States, but like 15 years ago. Like they're a little bit behind times. Um, yeah. And uh, and we were cracking jokes about it. And I'm sure whenever the uh, Australians come over here, I'm sure things are a little different for them. The food's different. Um, food is food is rough over there. I ain't going to lie. And I don't even understand how they could sit there and eat it. We've tried every restaurant. I try to – I try to – an eight hundred dollar steak, it, it just doesn't work. Like, it, what are they it, missing? They missing seasoning rough. on it or what? I, well, so that's part of the issue. I get there's some seasonings that they're not allowed to get over there. A lot of the sugar stuff that you we get over here in the U.S., they're not allowed to produce that over there. So, like, very rarely will you see any fat people over there. I mean, I get it. I understand. Like, if you want to lose weight, just go to Australia for a month. You'll be okay. <laughs> um, but uh, like, yeah, ask, the old, the, ask the old man. <laughs> yeah, their ketchup, their ketchup is tomato sauce, like uh, mixed. Oh. We said it was like mixed with Worcestershire, like it's got a weird taste to it. So we didn't eat that. They don't have no ranch. They don't have no uh, Thousand Island. They don't have no blue cheese. Um, let's see what else they got. Let's uh, mustard. Uh, Sean Ellington, Murder Nova, is a big mustard guy. There's no mustard. No nothing. Nowhere. Um, their McDonald's is called Mackey's. Um, they, they have no menu. They have a, a English McMuffins, their breakfast, and you can get a double cheeseburger or a Big Mac for lunch, and that's it. So think about the McDonald's menu that you have over here. They do not have it over there. There's no hash browns. There's no there's no uh, breakfast burritos. There's, there's none of that. So um, it's definitely um, different over there. Um, their, their steaks, their meat is uh, very gamey and very chewy, so – um, I do say that they, they struggle a little bit when it comes to the food side. But the scenery is nice. The people are amazing. I will say this. I feel like the fan base over there and the people as a whole, um, they're probably the most kind people I've ever met in my life. And uh, I did meet a lot of people and I met some good friends. Um, I was a little sad to leave. I won't lie. But uh, I was happy to get back to the States because, dude, I was ready to eat whatever. I mean, I was ready to go get a, a sweet tea from Chick-fil-A. I was ready to hit my Beef O'Brady's to get my wings. I was getting a cheeseburger wrap. I mean, I went on a, oh, a yeah. binge whenever I got back home. Nice. Uh, now, I saw you guys get a little a little bit of free time. Uh, you guys went on a yacht for a day or so. Um, how much free time did you actually get, though? Was that, like, your only day? No. Um, so we we had to do a lot of filming. This show is going to be a little bit different than the stuff that you're going to see on the other shows. Uh, it's going to be a lot more reality. So there was filming throughout the whole week. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It was very tiring. Um, you filmed a lot, all days. I think we got, you know, Monday and Tuesday off. Well, not necessarily because Monday was a fly day. So we got Tuesday off. Wednesday, we would go do something. Thursday, we'd have to go to the track. Um, Friday, be at the track. Saturday, be at the track. And then for the last race, we were at the track on Sunday, too. But uh, it was definitely a struggling deal. We did have, you know, we were able to go do what we want, but uh, we were filming stuff throughout the week. I was filming stuff with Kai, Stinky Pinky. So um, it was definitely a, a work thing all week long. I see oh, everybody keep talking about the shop. Guys, I'm in the middle of uh, reinvading, uh, uh, moving stuff around. Let me see if I can turn this real quick. So we're like building rooms and everything. So that's why it's kind of messy right now. Nothing is organized because we're in the process of building a merch room. We're building a podcast room. We're trying to get everything ready before prenup gets back here. So the shop is kind of destroyed right now. Busy, busy, busy. Um, so you hadn't had your small tire Mustang for a while before you brought it over to Australia. How did it perform over there? Uh, the first race, uh, can't talk a whole lot about it because, um, I mean, the show's got to air. They, people got to watch it. I will say that the first race was very struggling. I ain't going to lie. I didn't have a whole lot of passes on it. Um, there were some times where um, I did feel completely horrible because I really wasn't contributing, not one cent to Team USA. Um, but uh, 
you know, moving forward past that race, we, we picked it up. We had the help from the other guys that were on the team. My dad, um, big country, my uncle, Mike, they were able to, uh, come together and, and give me a race car and, and we started doing good. Um, but, uh, yeah, we won't, we won't get into it too much. Y'all just have to watch the show, but definitely the first race was very struggling. Um, how was it being teammates with all those guys? Um, it was amazing. The first time? It was amazing. I ain't going to lie. Uh, we, we talk about, we're all in a group chat and we actually still text to this day. And we said, it, this is the only thing that we were talking over there talking about. It's going to be very confusing going into MPK. When we left Australia that day, we were all riding on the bus back to the airport and we were all just sitting there talking. And we said, it is going to be very hard to run MPK this year because like we're always at each other's throats, uh, you know, doing this. And yes, we're all competitive and we're going to be competitive this year, but we got to live with each other for five weeks. There was no drama. Everybody had fun. There was no incidents with anything going on. So it was it was a cool deal. And I felt like everybody got to be a lot closer and know know each other a lot more. Um, and and so moving forward, like even like Sean said, uh, Murder Nova, he's like, I'm sure one of y'all is going to piss me off the first race of NPK. And we'll probably be back to square one. But for right now, he goes, it's kind of hard for me to be an asshole to y'all because I kind of like y'all. So uh, that was that was definitely an experience right there and uh, seeing that team. And I'm hoping, you know, moving forward, if we go do that again, um, there has been hints that we are going to be doing something else. Uh, I I put a little request in there. I said uh, I feel like it should be the same 10 that that went out there, um, the nine drivers that were there and then boosted uh, boosted was uh, head over all of us. He was handling trying to negotiate. Uh, he was out there, you know, uh, making sure the crowd and all that was entertained. And that wasn't uh, an easy job. I mean, the, the sun was over there brutal. It was beaten down. He was able to talk him through the whole entire time. So uh, I feel like if we were able to get the chance again to go do that again, I hope it's the same 10 guys that go on because it was drama free. I felt like the show was amazing. We all worked together off the show um, just like we did when we were on the show. So uh, it was an all around good deal. Nice man. And did you get any chance at nighttime to partake of partake or party with any of the locals from Australia? Um, maybe do some shoeies, something like that. I I did not do no shoey. Um, uh, I, I wanted to, but I just uh, everything was so busy. I mean, it was. I did. I, I will take it back. I did go out and party. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I partied in every city. Um, I don't usually party a lot. And even like when I'm here in the States, I don't party a lot and I don't drink a lot. But I will say that they drink a lot over there. Um, there was a there was a, a girl um, that I was posting on my page and people were seeing and all that. And uh, she actually took us out whenever we were uh, in. Uh, well, I took her out, but she came and introduced us to our city over there in Sydney. We went out there when we were in Brisbane. We went out on uh, the boat. Uh, we went in Perth, we went out and hit some places. A lot of places close early, like at, uh, so, uh, like Perth, everything closes at nine o'clock. So there was times when we're at the track later than nine, you're done. You got to wait till the next morning for you can get any food, anything, because everything closes at nine o'clock. Um, so that was a little different, but yeah, we had fun and uh, we did, we did a lot of party, even team Nola, you know, Scott Taylor, Jeff Lutz, uh, all, all of us was out there and, uh, we were all out, you know, hitting the bars, having fun and. It was all around a fun experience. That's good, man. I hope I hope the ratings are good on the TV show. I hope y'all continue to do that stuff, man. Go go out of the country and experience that shit like that. Um, all right, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's go. Let's talk about No Prep King season, upcoming season. Um, you had a video out, I think it was last week on your YouTube, where you basically um, read the rules for this season. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a combo that you think? Is going to do well, and is there a combo you think is not is going to struggle? Honestly, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't get too far into the rules. I don't care what the rules are, uh, whatever they are. I adjust to them. I'm not on that little rule committee. I'm not. I'm not special enough to be on there. But I'm glad I'm not on there. I don't have to make that decision. Um, whatever the rules are, and that and and I was called by a few racers like, "Hey, what do you think?" And at the end of the day, like I told them, just like I'm going to tell y'all. We don't care what the rules are. We don't care what the weights are at. We don't care what combos what. I do feel as long as there's parity and there's and it's – I don't mind getting beat because the other guy made it down the track or he's better than me that day. But don't let just 
us or even not take me out of the instance, just anybody get beat because the rule is just are just in favor for that combo. So that's one rule that they came out with this year is that every three races, if somebody's just out there just <clears throat> blazing away and they know for sure that they're on it, then there's going to be a rule adjustment. And I feel like there should be that too. So uh, we'll see how that plays this year. Um, but uh, I think the rules are pretty fair. I'm going to be honest with you. Looking at the rules, the weights, looking at all the combos, how they are, um, yes, they're going to have their bells and whistles, and there's going to be a couple hundreds here and there. But for the most part, I think starting out, I think the rules are pretty fair. Nice. Um, and one of the rules, uh, you guys are down to a 34 and a half tire. Um, yep. Do you do you think that's going to like tighten the field up even even more now? Like make it even more tighter for like 20, 25 guys that are like, really close for for speed wise. So my personal opinion is no. Uh, I, I was asked about that too, and, and I have no problem saying it. The people that put in the work and that run up front, they're going to continue to put in the work and run up front on the smaller tire. You won't, you don't get to just put the guys that are running up front on a smaller tire and they're going to slow down and think the back half of the field that gets put on a smaller tire too is just going to speed up to be able to make it. It doesn't work like that. So if you say instance, you know, first half of the field slows down a tenth, tenth and a half, whatever it may be, that other half of the field, unless they're going to put in the work and do their combo how they're supposed to and, and go test and do whatever, they're going to slow down that same increment too. So um, I feel like, and, and I think this year is going to be the most competitive year. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's definitely going to be tough, but uh, you're going to have to put in work to be able to be up front. Mm -hmm. no, most, no, no doubt. Um, so what's your goal for this year, Justin? Um, obviously, you finished third the last two seasons. Um, is it? I mean, I know you only win a championship, but it, would it be – is it like a down year if you don't finish in the top couple again? Um, yeah, every year. Is like The way I look – even like rolling in last year, you know, me coming out and finishing third was – my first year was great, but it was also a hinder too because at the end of the day, my fan base, me, myself, I expect to finish third or better the following year. Last year, we got wrecked. We struggled. We moved back to 16th. We moved ourselves all the way back up, and we finished third at the end of the year. At the end of the day, with everything that I had going on last year, I was okay with finishing third. I would have loved to have been second or first. It is what it is. Um, but – uh I did finish third. So, you know, moving into this year, I'm on the same mindset. I need to finish third or better. Um, and and I don't know how how it's going to lay out. There's a lot of fast cars. Um, there's a there's some teams that's a that's gearing up for this year. That's getting better. So it's definitely going to be tougher. Um, this this is going to be the hardest year of uh, Street Outlaw No Prep Kings. I can guarantee that. Yeah, um, and then there's been some videos out and some talk about possibly the whole the whole all no prep kings kind of format changing, um, and we don't have to get into the details of it. But um, are you excited for the changes that are possibly going to happen next year? Yes, Sweet. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna uh, it's gonna broaden everything as a whole. Um, I think it's gonna it's gonna bring in a whole different view look of it, and. Uh, um, without getting too much into it, I feel like a lot of people won't have to – or a lot of people will have to up their own program and work harder on their program and not have the satisfaction of relying on others. I agree. I agree with that, man. And it's definitely going to make for better TV. I think it's going to – you know, switching it up. You can't, you can't keep – you know, you can't keep doing the same thing every year, and not that they do, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think Sam, whoever came up with this idea, I think – Switching it up, keeping it fresh, I think is, is great for everything, man. Um, so you talked about you mentioned your dad earlier and how he tunes your car and stuff like that. How is how is it? Are you're the only one. You're the only one I think in No Prep Kings that had where this you, father and son combo where you are the driver and he tunes your car. How does that? How does that relationship work between you guys? Um. So I mean, me and my dad, we have a great relationship. As in. Uh, we've been together, you know, since day one. Uh, we we uh, we hang out every day. We eat lunch every day. Uh, we have a very tight relationship. Um, sometimes we are around each other too much, and um, that can cause little shit here and there. Um, but if we ever get an argument, I've seen there's people that's probably seen us argue at the track or whatever. One good thing about my dad and me or anybody, 
if we get an argument, we're going to say what's on our chest right there. And within 10 minutes, we're back to normal. It is what it is. We done moved on from it. There's not, I'm not going to sit there and dwell on it. Neither is he. There's every now and then we just get into a little altercation, but uh, we've gotten a lot better. Um, and, uh, and some things are uh, some things I'm wrong for. Um, I feel like some things I, I do, I am right when it comes to, you know, branding and, and doing all that. Um, and then like one thing I have to learn is even though I, I run the operation and I own it all now and I, I'm the one that makes the final decision, um, I, I will I am the the end all be all, I guess you want to say. But at the end of the day, he's still the tuner. So there's a lot of times that I fuck him up by trying to get suggestions or trying to get him to step, take a step back or whatever when, and then we end up going in the wrong direction. Um, so I've gotten a lot better with like, you know, leaving him be and let him do his thing. And that's one thing that w we did. I realized over in Australia, um, I was, I was trying to be so cautious and I was wanting to do different shit and it just wasn't working. And then finally we got into our little blow up. Um, and then we basically, I'm going to drive. He's going to tune. It is what it is. And uh, and it worked out great. Um, and that's the same thing I plan on moving into NPK. I got so much shit going on uh, running this deal. And, and this thing has, has gotten pretty big. Swan Gang has gotten pretty big. So I, that's one thing. I, I have 100% faith in him. And he's going to be able to handle it all. And whatever his decision are, is moving forward, um, that's what we're going to do. So uh, if we want to go test something, that's why I told him. I mean, if you want to test something, you want to do whatever. I'll spend the money. I'll make sure we get the parts. We get it. Let's go test. And, and we part. We're gonna we got got a couple different converters. We're about to start testing. We got different rear gears. Uh, we got shocks. I mean, there's some stuff. And I literally spent the money to be able to do it. And we're gonna test to figure out what the better combo is. Nice, nice. It's cool to see you guys, father son, doing that stuff on the on the TV show, man. That's good. Um, so this What's year, up, Richard. <laughs> Richard, Richard, yeah, Richard. Ricky, you want to know what your top pick is? Uh, so this year was your first time on the streets. You don't get into details of what you actually happened there, but how was your experience racing on the streets for the filming of Mega Cash Days? I loved it. I ain't gonna lie. Um, I won't lie to you. We fucking suck. It was uh, <laughs> it was pretty rough. But I had never been on the street in my life. I I got a car a day before the event. Um, but uh, it it was definitely a it was definitely a learning curve. Um, and the car that we were working with at the time, it was, uh, we didn't get, we couldn't change it around for our liking. And even moving over into Australia, we were still struggling because like right when we left the street deal, we put it on a, a container and shipped it across the ocean. So like we didn't get to change stuff that we wanted to change. So granted, it could have been a whole lot better and it probably could have been different. But that's one of those deals that I was kind of glad. I mean, I hate that. I, I hate that we lost and we weren't, I, I will give that information out. We lost whatever, but I hate that. Or I was okay with it because hypothetically, you know, say all the stars lined up and we did go out there and just boom, dominated. That means you'd have to dominate every single time. And I had very low hopes going into that deal. I, I even told dad, I said, listen, I've never been on the street. I, I'm a little nervous. I ain't going to lie. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, and let's just go out there. And I, I just want to have fun. And I did. Listen, I ain't going to lie. I, I had a lot of fun. Um, Boosted GT, he was helping me out. I was talking with Ryan, Murder Nova. I mean, I watched the show. And, and I tell people all the time, I'm not a street racer. You'll, you'll never see me go ahead and say, and, and, and you'll never see me just, you know, back the door down, pull the car out, and let's go ahead and get the street on. I've probably ran for more money in a grudge race than any of the other guys have ran. Um, before, but I make it very clear. I'm not a street racer. I, I don't, I don't need to do that, but I feel like for my brand moving forward, I need to go ahead and get into on the street shows. Um, and that's what we did. And, uh, and it taught me a lot and it, sh it helped me out a lot because now I'm getting geared up to be able to go out there, to be able to try to compete and move forward and try to win. So is it safe to say we definitely want to you definitely want to be on some more street shows moving forward? Street Outlaw? Oh yeah. Yes. Nice. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll definitely be out there. Um so let's talk about how the success you've had on Street Outlaws now, Justin. Um, like you said, you were chosen as one of the top ten to go to Australia. You've been in the top three now, two seasons in a row since you've been in No Prep Kings. Um talk about how 
how it is to accomplish so much already in such a short time on, on the TV show? Uh, a lot of hard work. I ain't going to lie. Um, I, I tell people all the time. Um, I know a lot of people think that, you know, I'm just on there being comical and uh, having fun. And I am. I tell people the day that I don't have fun doing this no more will be the day that I'll sell everything and I'll go do something else. I mean, I do have fun traveling around. I have fun meeting all the fans. Um, doing all that. That's what keeps this thing driven and keeps it going. And I try to thank all my fans as much as I can, because without them, I wouldn't be able to do this. I backed away from a six figure job, um, taking on racing full time. I now get to travel the countries um, and uh, and here in the United States and moving forward. Now I'm running on the street. Now I'm doing other stuff. Uh, I get paid on social media. So I'm doing a lot of things. I ain't going to lie. And uh, but uh it, it's definitely a lot of hard work. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do it without my team. I have some sponsors. Uh, shout out to Hormone Logics. Uh, he came on board last year. That was a huge sponsor. He doesn't come back on board this year. We have some other things that we're gearing up that we haven't released yet, but uh, we're working to do that. Um, and uh, I always had the urge to want to be great, want to move forward, and want to keep winning. So um, I'm, I was okay with – doing whatever it took to be able to try to be up front, try to beat Ryan Martin, try to beat Kai Kelly, Lizzie Musio, Daddy Dave, all of them. Um, and some I have taken a loss to, some I have won over. Um, but uh, it, it's it's definitely a, a struggle deal. Um, but we were able to put it together and, you know, finish third. I don't really have a like a game plan like, hey, if you go do this, you're going to finish too because it doesn't work like that. Anything can happen. Uh, with this racing deal that we got going on. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, I feel like my team has probably – a lot of teams work hard. I'm not going to say that. But I feel like my team does have a lot of heart and moving forward. And and no matter where we go or what we do or, or what style of racing that we do, you get, you're not going to be able to count us out. Sooner or later, we are going to figure it out. We're going to be able to move forward. And, and I will do whatever it takes to stay up front. Yeah. Uh, one thing I've noticed, Justin, is you've done obviously an amazing job with social media and you're always grinding it. And you know exactly what you need to do with that. Um, talk about some of the future plans with social media and maybe getting your podcast up up and running again, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, we're starting up a podcast. Uh, we're doing I mean, I already started it, but I uh, moved rooms. I'm now here in the shop. I, we were racing a lot last year. Then we ran the street show. And then we went to Australia. So we haven't had time to really do nothing. Now that I'm home, um, prenup is getting done. We're basically taking these next couple of weeks. I'm building a merch room. I'm building a podcast room. We're starting back up a podcast. Uh, I'm going to be flying special guests in to be able to uh, – to have a guest on there and and do our podcast along with me, my dad, my uncle Mike, uh, being able to do that stuff too. I think it's going to be a, a great avenue. Uh, Swan Gang has kind of outgrown me. I, I've I've held the reins the whole time. I I handle everything. I do all the editing. I do all the posting. Any anything that you see on social media comes directly from me. Um, wow. So uh, that that is changing a little bit this year. I will still be the one that is commenting, answering messages, doing the post. But I did hire a film guy that is uh, basically going to do nothing but just follow me around with a camera, film the stuff, edit the videos, and uh, moving forward. Uh, I also hired a guy to be able to – I'm going to have to train him to be able to uh, work on the car, do all that, because my goal is this year um, at MPK is to uh, try to sell as much merch as we can and stand out there – and be with the fans. So I am uh, switching the team around a little bit. Um, we are adding some people on to be able to, you know, help work on the car. They will have uh, designated jobs that they have to do, and they will be able to work on the car. If there's anything that is, I say, above their pay grade, I'll be there to make sure that it uh, it does well and, and goes smooth. But for the most part, my goal is is to try to stand out there as long as I can, greet every fan that comes in, um, have fun, sell merch, and uh, just keep growing the fan base. Uh, one thing I, I've always told everybody, the fans is what keeps this thing going. Um, if they relied on just the drivers to come to the track, no track would stay open. The fan base is what keeps this going. And uh, I've been very good about that. Um, I tell people all the time that people literally save up their hard-earned time and money to be able to come out and see us. So I will literally do whatever it takes to be able to try to make 
every race, do all that. Even last year, we wrecked a car. We were uh, we fixed the car in three days, and there was a time where I was like, man, I'm just not going to make me or uh, make that race. Um, and and I told Dad, I said, we have to try. If if I can't do it, I can't do it. But I at least got to try. I'm not going to cut it loose this far away from the race day. Um, so because at the end of the day, like I said. Uh, people do spend their hard-earned time and money to be able to come out and see us. So you want to put on a show. You want to do that. And I want to make sure that I put on a good show. And I feel like I do. Um, there's a lot of other drivers out there that put on good shows, too. There's some drivers that milk the shit out. I'm not going to lie. They uh, they they milk it out. And they know who they are. Um, and sooner or later, that'll come to a head. But uh, it is what it is. Um, but uh, I feel like I do put on a good show. I feel like it's entertaining. Um, my social media is entertaining and and that's the reason why I, I have succeeded so well and I've, I've gone up to the top pretty fast and uh, I've got invited to the other shows and I've gotten invited to go to other countries and uh, it, it's not it's not because I'm I'm not doing my job right no you're exactly right um, have you ever thought about teaching a social or a social media class to some of the drivers on the prep kinks because um, just in my yes. little bit of, just in my little bit of time of doing social media now like there's so it's so beneficial once you get into it to help your program that I like I'm like thinking, man, some of these drivers should really be doing this hardcore. Like they could help their program so much more financially. I tell, everything. I tell people all the time um, and there's a lot. Of sh- I, I don't. So like when I make uh, let me go ahead and just break it down for everybody. When I make posts and I do my stuff on social media, my my ultimate goal is is to be able to get people to talk either people to talk shit, you know, to bicker back and forth between each other and just to be able to grow my deal. When I make that post, I forget about it. I never even think about it again. I keep it moving forward. I may comment back for the first 30 to 45 minutes and then I keep it rolling. I'm on to my next deal. So when people are like, oh, you're, you're, you're beating a dead horse or you're doing all that. No, I, I plan stuff out because I know how it's going to go and I know how to do it. Like my biggest thing right now is, there's sometimes that I'll misspell words and I love it when people go on there and go, damn, he's illiterate. He misspelled it. Nope. I misspelled it because I got you to comment to tell me that I'm illiterate and misspelled it. And it's okay with me because at the end of the day, I just got an extra fucking 30 comments on my post. That's how I get paid to be able to move forward. Now that's just a little bit of free advice. I know other people are going to start doing it too, because it does not take much. I do get copied on a lot of my shit uh, moving forward. Um, but uh, I, at the end of the day, I'll always come up with new stuff, uh, keep moving forward, and I, I'm young enough to be able to uh, uh, keep keep going with it. So, but at the end of the deal, I do feel that racers could easily grow their fan base and and do a whole lot more for their program if they would just put in the time to do YouTube, do Facebook, do Instagram, think about their fans, sell merch. Um, and there's a lot of stuff, but at the end of the day, I, I can't, I can lead a horse to the water, but I can't make them drink. So yeah, I'm, true. I'm good with it. And, and I've learned to, you know, stick to myself and, uh, and just grow my deal. And it, it is what it is. And that's the reason why I feel like at the end of the day, I'm a top five person over in no prep Kings. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I've been doing it for three years and there's a lot of people that hate that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I don't. I don't care. I'm gonna keep moving forward in my program, and uh, and be good. That's right, man. Keep doing you. Um, we got a little off-topic question, but so I'm a football guy. Played high school, college, semi-pro, and I had heard you were a football guy at one point too in high school. Um, yeah. I want to know, were you any good? Yeah. Uh, I mean, everybody says that they're good or whatever. I get that, but oh, I mean, yeah. I was I, I was a good football player. I played football my whole life. Um. I started when I was a young kid. I went through, uh, I went to, you know, combines. I, I, uh, I could have easily went to college. I had scouts that were coming and looking at me and all that. But at the end of the day, I, uh, I decided I wanted to go racing. And I told my dad, I said, listen, I don't want to go to college. Uh, I want to go racing. This is what I want to do. And at the time we were working and racing on cars. Um, so, uh, or racing cars. And uh, so I decided I didn't want to go to college. So I finished high school and I graduated on a fourth. I think it was June 4th. And uh, that was a Thursday. And on the fifth, which was Friday, uh, I went to work. Um, Now, now during my summers and my spring breaks growing up, I worked with my dad at the construction company. 
Um, I was a younger kid, so like I, I wasn't out there every day, but I did work and I understood it uh, moving forward. So like I said, when I told him that I didn't want to go to college, uh, I, I had to go to work. So the next day, you know, I woke up at 5 a.m. and I started pushing forward and uh, we started up another side of the construction business. Basically, uh, my dad did underground utilities, uh, you know, put it in pipe his whole life, doing road work. And uh, we wanted to start up another side. And because I just graduated, we went ahead and did that. That's how we got into the back truck and TV truck business. I did it for seven years. Um, 2019, I, I raced the whole time. But 2019, I started social media as in Facebook, YouTube. And I, I still to this day wish I had it whenever I was racing way back in the day. I feel like I'd be 10 times farther ahead than what I am now. But it's all right. So 2019, I started it. And uh, I used to wake up at 5 a.m. I'd work a vac truck or a TV truck all day. I'd get off at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and then I would handle my social media on the, uh, the, uh, the after hours. I'd stay up till 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. I'd get two hours of sleep. I'd get back up in the morning at 5 a.m., and I'd go back to work. I did that for a year straight um, moving in forward. And then basically I told uh, uh, my dad, my mom, that in February of 21 – that I wanted to uh, I wanted to pull away and I wanted to take social media on full time. That was the game plan. Uh, they were kind of against it at first. They said that it maybe maybe won't work. And I told them if it didn't work, then I knew I always had somewhere where I could come back and do it. But yep. I basically told them that I wasn't going to work construction my whole life. My dad has worked construction his whole life and he's made a good living. I ain't going to lie. Um, but it's definitely hard work and you're out in the sun all day. And I feel like there's so many other avenues out there that you can do different stuff. Um, yeah. And that's what I did. So I backed off and I took on social media and uh, it just started moving forward with it. That's awesome, man. And you're right. Usually when I ask a question, if someone was good at sports back in the day, they always say, yeah, yeah, I was really good. <laughs> I was all this and all that. So I, I, in this case, I did a little research because I got to, you know, when someone tells me I got to, I got to see if it's true or not. So I want everybody watching here. I got a little video clip to play of Justin, Justin playing football in high school. I want you guys to uh, get your own opinion if you thought Justin is any good or not. Bottom of the screen, tight end. Quarterback. Quarterback again. Quarterback. Oh. Hey, man, you were slinging it a little bit there. Those, those <laughs> are some old clips right there. I ain't going to lie. I, just, I went to match preps and just found a, a highlight getting tape of yours from one of the games you played. I think it was your senior year. Uh, yeah. But, man, you were, I, I watched a lot of them, man. You were throwing the ball pretty good. Yeah. No, I, I played quarterback uh, growing up and everything. Uh, I used to be able to throw it really far. And to this day, like when we're at the racetrack or whatever, kids come out and want to play football and all that. Uh, I'll get out there and sling it with them. We do some foot races. Um, I'll run with them and all that and just have fun. Cause at the end of the day, they're, uh, they're there to have fun and uh, be entertained. Thanks, man. Hey, I got a new, I have a new uh, portion of my show where I call it, did you know, right? Read off a couple of stats of yours. Um, couple of good ones and then one not so good one and i want to get your opinions on the facts so um since season four which is your first year um obviously we know you've taken third place twice um but did you know that you were actually tied for event wins with with kai kelly for second place so out of out of invitationals grade eights and team attacks all the stuff that they show on no prep kings um you're actually tied with kai um since season four Nice. I, I'm I'm so glad. Hold up. Let's see. If, let's see if this dude will answer the phone. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know that was good for your rivalry there. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send him a text and let him know. So. <laughs> yeah, he won this right, many events as guy. Got it. Since season four. Um, and then uh, 
when you get to the finals, you've been in the finals eight times with all those concluded since season four. You've won six six of the times you've won. So you have a 75% win, win percentage in the finals, which is second only to Ryan Martin. Um, we won't talk about Kai's win percentage in the finals, but you are definitely second. <laughs> So well, I usually I gotta points. usually I gotta face Ryan either in the finals or in third round. Like I I don't know what it is, but I run Ryan. I'm pretty sure I don't know about this stat. I, I think I run Ryan more than anybody. I looked it up. I looked up that stat today because I know you had said that during the season at one point. And this past season, you actually did run him more than anybody. But see, I, I at least knew it. <laughs> In season four, you're second to, to Lizzie. Liz, Lizzie's actually running more, but um, I think obviously when you guys are running really good, all you know, all you guys at the top are going to run each other more than anybody else because you For guys sure. are going to face each other later on in the rounds. But um, but I got one stat here you're not going to like, and you're going to have to make up some ground this year. Um, but since season four, you are four and eight versus Kai Kelly in no prep games. Yeah. Um... So me and him go back and forth a lot of that. I wish you would – what you need to do is, because now you're going to blow his head up, you need to go back to the grudge days when I was stomping his head in the ground and I was 6-0 and against him. And then I ended up being 2-0 and against him when we started No Prep Kings. Um, we, we slacked off, and I gave him a few wins uh, coming forward. But uh, I will say that when he did come out with the new car, the Shocker, I was the first person to give him his first two losses in the same weekend. Yeah. No, and, dude, you got some hardcore fans. So, like, uh, one of the first times I posted that you have – he had actually won more races against you. Um, one of your, Some of your fans were messaging me, probably messaging me, saying, man, you you missed all the grudge races. <laughs> well, I used to kick the, his ass. I, and it, was- me, and Kai, me and Kai go back and forth, and uh, – and we've, we've, we've became pretty good friends. I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't know his take on it, but I think in my eyes, I think we became pretty good friends. I mean, we do quite a bit of shit. We talk to each other at least once a week, um, text back and forth, call. Um, he invited me to go up to the hunting camp. I haven't been hunting since I was a kid, so I did tell him I'm going to do it. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the gear all back out, get it all ready, scopes all sighted in, and um, I'm going to go up to the hunting camp with him and David Gates and uh, – even though on the racetrack we all, you know, are very competitive and I want to beat both their ass more than anybody, um, we can still have fun off the track, drink some beers. There's been plenty of time. I, hell, last year, Minnesota, me, him, David Gates, and uh, a few of the crew guys, we stayed up till 6 a.m. Friday night drinking beer and had to be back up, you know, at because the gates open at 9 a.m. on Saturday, had to be back up and race all day Saturday. Like, that was probably very rough. And I don't understand why we stayed up that late, but we literally sat there around a fire, drank beer all night, and just talked shit and having stories um, nice. and, and moving forward and having to race the next day. But, yeah, those are those are good guys. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, David Gates is another good dude uh, I became pretty good friends with. And, uh, you know, when we went to California to run the, the TV show, we shot the after hours. We all – I bought a Airbnb. And uh, Lizzie, yeah. Kai, David Gates, they all stayed in the same Airbnb uh, with us. And uh, we shot content. Uh, we had fun. We had to go out shoot the street show. So it was a cool deal. And uh, we became pretty good friends after the whole deal. Nice, man. Um, Tom, Tom Pierce, uh, those stats were – the Tulsa race was included because I know it wasn't showing on TV, but um, definitely <laughs> – Justin definitely earned that, so I definitely included that. <laughs> included that race. I know. I uh, had to Kai, Kai still owes me two you daddies. <laughs> uh, all right, Justin. If you want to take take a couple questions from the fans here, um, so if you if you're watching, if you got any qu- questions, um, Justin will watch in the chat box and pick up something he wants to answer. Um, while that's going on, I am going to uh, shout out a couple of my partners. For any and all No Prep Racing news, not just Street Outlaws, go to NoPrep.com or the No Prep Racing page on Facebook. This is the number one source for all things No Prep, so be sure to check it out. Are you looking for a quick access firearm storage system that has a variety of access control levels based on your needs? Well, head on over to DoorGunnerUSA.com, a family-owned business who makes their products 100% right here in the USA. If you're in the business for motorsports, automotive, or event photography, 
Look no further than Annette Bauer Creative. She specializes in photography as well as social media management and partnership consultations. You can find her on Instagram or through her website at AnnetteBauerCreative.com. CajunHeritage.com is the place to go for authentic Cajun flavor. Rouge seasonings provide a high quality, pure, and affordable option when you're looking for that South Louisiana taste. All right, I found a couple of comments here or questions. Um, a bunch of them want to know if prenup is going to stay the color green. Yes. Yes. Awesome. That is the badass uh, color. I'm keeping it. I'll go ahead and try to do. I'll do a little speed deal. Or will Big Daddy Brian be back this season? Yes, he'll be back. Uh, he'll. He's not ever going to go anywhere. Prenup's going to be green. When do you think side piece will be done? I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, who do you like racing the most? Um, it's between it's between Ryan or Kai. Uh, I feel like it's always a good race. It's a great race for the fans. Um, no matter, you never know which way it's going to go. I know people. Yes, Ryan is pretty dominant, but uh, um, he he did get beat quite a bit of time. Who beat Ryan the most this year? Who beat Ryan the most this year? Yeah, you got all the stats. I do. But you kind of put me on the spot there. I'll go ahead and answer some questions while you're doing that. <laughs> okay, I'll look it up. Give me a second. Yes, uh, was it Justin Darren B. where he had his ass out? Yeah, that'll <laughs> that'll peel, that'll still be. Uh, I think that'll be on the show too. Will you do any more grudge racing? Yes, um, we grudge race all the time whenever we're running at PK. What's the most you've ever ran for? I've made one grudge race before, one pass before for ninety eight thousand dollars. That was a pretty stressful deal. I was like seventeen at the time. Oh. Let's see. I think it's going to be. He doesn't lose very often. I don't know who. It's a lot of guys. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go ahead and say it was me. <laughs> the reason why I asked it. I had to run the guy more than anybody, but I think I got four of the wins this year. Um, Grade eight, I think, is when you did it the most, too, right? I couldn't tell you that. I mean, we could just say you. Who's gonna Who's gonna check those stats? Nobody else is gonna double check those stats. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it is me, and not a dagger or anything. But I do run Ryan more than anybody, and uh, I feel like that brings the best out in me. And uh, he's always gonna run me hard. So, uh, like I, I tell people all the time that uh, he, he can go out there, you know, shake the tires, get up close by the wall, take out a cone, the pass before me. Like we we'll be like, and like even our guys. When they'll, they'll come back sometimes. They'll be like, oh, Ryan was close by the wall. He had to shake the tires. Doesn't matter. When he goes to run me, it's going to be a straight pass. It's going to be the fastest pass of the night. It's just how it is. So um, <laughs> we've learned to, to try to go as fast as we can, and sometimes we get around them. Sometimes we don't. Yeah. No, I think you, John Odom, beaten a couple times this year. Um, like I guess that doesn't lose very often. So it's – Do you know yeah. – do you, you know definitely race them a lot, for sure. Um, yes, I know who all the captains are, but I, I'm not going to say them. How much do you love your mama? I love my mama very much. <laughs> uh, so, Lizzie yeah, Richard. Uh, Richard's just playing, guys. Um, he's uh, that's that's a. Uh, let's. How do I? How do? What? How do we? How would we say? What's Richard's job description? Um, he handles all social media for Fireball and Ryan Motorsports. Uh, Ryan gets on there when he's talking and all that. That is Ryan, but I, I'm pretty sure that Richard handles, uh, you know, getting all the editing, the videoing. Um, you'll see him running around the car, turning on cameras, getting it all ready, and that's one thing I will say that he's good at, and that's probably, that's one of the reasons why I needed to hire somebody um, was to be able to get somebody like him to be able to be there. It's hard for me to work on the car, set up the cameras and uh, get all the footage, then turn around and have to edit the footage and then post the footage. Um, it, it's, it's very tough. So being able to get somebody kind of like how Ryan's got, he's got Richard, his right-hand guys, be able to get all the content, be able to get the photos because you need to post 
on social media. Uh, social media is the next biggest thing. It, it already is the biggest thing, and that's how you're going to grow your deal. And that's the reason why Ryan will continue to keep growing um, because he's got great people in his corner uh, that's going to be able to help him succeed. And Richard's one of those guys, um, and he's oh, yeah. helped me out, you know, uh, getting stuff and everything. So I appreciate that. But uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Richard, Richard is the man. Uh, is Lizzie and Kai split? No, nah, they're getting married. I'm, I'm the best man. Uh, so what new rule do you like the most? I'm honest, I can honestly answer that. I think the rule that I dislike the most is the 25 pound weight reduction for a car before 1979. Um, I get it why they're trying to do it. They want people to have an older style car, but you should have to go build a car and if you decide you want to build a car before that year, then you get uh, a weight reduction. But the people that build cars that are 2018, 2000, like my new car uh, side piece, it's, it's dumb because it's a 2022. So I don't get that 25 pounds. Now, oh. granted, it's only a number or two, but still that number or two adds up at the end. So yeah. I will say, uh, but it is what it is. I am going to. Uh, keep moving forward with it. Do you think it has to do with the aerodynamics? Is that pretty much why they do it? Aerodynamics don't mean shit in the eighth mile. If we're running quarter mile, I could have seen that. Eighth mile, no. Gotcha. Uh, did you like testing the Mills car? It was different. That's the first time I've ever been uh, in somebody else's car with that kind of power to make a rip like that. Um, I was a little nervous when I let go of the button the first time. Uh, it completely bunny hopped off the track. I ain't going to lie. Okay? It caught me off guard. Um, and then I had to try to walk the throttle a couple times and get it down the track. So we finally got there. And then the second pass, we got it under control. I took it out to the 330. And then the third pass, I made a full rip. We'll have a YouTube video out on it this week. So you'll be able to watch that. Um, so. Man, yeah. Justin, I, can't believe you do, I can't believe you do all your social media stuff. And you do edit all the videos and everything yourself? Yes. Man, you are one busy dude then. Holy shit. Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, so let's see. Your favorite track? I'd probably say either Minnesota or Colorado. Probably Colorado. Uh, say whatever. You got any other questions you've seen? Or you got anything uh, that you want to ask? I'm pretty much an open book. Um, no, no, you actually, you've answered way more than what we usually do, what I usually do. So this, this has been good. Uh, did you win the 98 grand? I did. Um, the other guy went red and I shook the tires right on the starting line. So for 98,000, would you say George is your biggest fan? George is like family. Uh, I, I love, I love George. I have a very, that's one thing I can't say. I have a very loyal fan base. Um, and I've grown it and it's gotten big enough now to where, uh, I don't even have to argue with people no more. My fan base comes and does it for me. And I love that. Like I sit behind the computer screen and I'm smiling ear to ear whenever I see that shit going on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I did win that race. I won the 98,000. Um, I've been in a lot of other big races, you know, 32, 45, um, 27,000, some big races. Um, I've taken a lot of money from people in MPK on grudge racing. Um, I had one guy that didn't want to bet money, so we bet his eyebrows. I won that race, so we shaved his eyebrows. Um, I do like to gamble. Uh, as y'all seen on the show, I gambled a fan $5,000 down in Bradenton Motorsports Park. I know a lot of people thought that was fake, but one thing I will say is I've never been a part of any fake grudge racing. If I say there's money on the line, it's money that I'm okay with losing. And I've had people that's came to me and be like, hey, let's go ahead and say this so we can go ahead and start. Let's just, let's just tell them we're racing and that's it. There's no point in lying and saying, hey, we're – and I can't stand it. And there's people that's done an MPK. We're running for $10,000. No, the fuck you're not. You never ran for $10,000 in your life. You, you wouldn't even know how to act when you run for $10,000. But it's easy for someone to say ten, or it's like it's just as easy to say fifteen. So might as well say we're running for $15,000, which you're not. But 
I tell people all the time, any race that I'm a part of, and I say that there's money on the line, that's how much money it is. Um, I did bet that oh, yeah. $5,000. I've ran Ryan for money before. I ran Kai for you daddies. And uh, I have to uh, I have to make sure if I lose, I pay all my debts. If they lose, I, I'm still owed a little bit of money for some people. But it's okay. They'll come around and they'll end up paying it. So... Let's you were just at I'm Noonan doing. recently. Um, one of the questions was, uh, uh, well, I fucking lost it now. What's the advantage of going with Noonan instead of ProLine? Yes, that was the question, I think. I don't know yet. I haven't tested the Noonan. Um, I'm hoping I went in the right direction, but I don't know. To be determined. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see. What else we got? I'm not seeing too much new stuff. I wish you would have took that big stack from Odom. Um, he didn't want to race that race. Uh, he'll tell you to. I He came into my trailer. Um, we were in Kentucky. He came into my trailer, and he had he had $80,000 in a bag. Um, and that was – and I listen, I love John to death, but I, I, call, I call it straight like I call it straight. He came in there. He had the cameras around, and it was – Hey, let's run for 80 grand. And I told him, I said, listen, I don't have 80 grand with me right now, so I can't run you for that. I don't even have 80 grand in the bank account right now. Um, leaving that race, uh, going, I, I can't remember where we went after Kentucky, but there was a lot of chirping on the internet. And I, I called my dad up and I said, you know what? I said, I said, fuck it. I said, I have $50,000. I had like 54 grand in the bank account. I said, I got 50 grand and we're going to go to this next race. Um, I don't know where we went after Kentucky. Uh, do you know where we went after Kentucky? Oh, fast. Give me a minute. I had, I had $54,000 in the bank account. I remember like yesterday, I called my dad up and I said, I got $50,000. We are going to show up at this next race and we are going to run him for $50,000. I said, I don't have no more money than that. I said, if I lose, I may not be able to make it to the next few races. That's okay. I'll I'll go ahead and uh, uh, regroup and come back out. I go, but we're shutting this shit down. Like, I'm either going to win. Yeah. Minnesota. I said, we're either going to win or we're going to lose. But we are running for $50,000. And I made it. And I didn't, I didn't need the internet or none of that. I went ahead and called him on the phone. And I told him, I said, hey, when we go to this next race, I said, we are running for 50 grand. I go, I, I if I lose, I'm letting you know now, if I lose, you won't see me at the next couple races because I ain't got the money to be able to make it there. I said, but if I win, it's beneficial for me. I said, but we done with all this. You done threw out the 80,000, whatever. We are running for 50 grand. And then uh, he come on there and I, and I made a Facebook post after we talked about it and everything. And he come on there and he's like, oh, I don't want to run for that. He goes, uh, and he, he told me straight to my face. He said, he goes, man, I, I'd be nervous running for $50,000. And, uh, and I told, and I never, I never talked about it again. It was, it was done. It was over with, but I told, I was serious at that time. I literally, I literally went and pulled the money out. I took it in a bag with me. I took it to Minnesota and I had 50 grand with me. I was willing to run that race there. I was willing to either win. And I had made sure I let Pilgrim know. I let everybody know that that race was happening and that if I lost, you wouldn't see me for a couple races or maybe the rest of the season. I said, but I was done with the shit that was being talked online and everything going on. <laughs> uh, but we didn't run that race. Well, we ran the race, but we didn't want to run for 50. We ran for five instead. And uh, I still waxed his ass, but I, I told him I was, I was fucking done with the whole internet shit. That was, that was the only time that like I was willing and, and I was pretty, and I was pretty confident in my car. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that deal there, but John's another good dude too. I mean, we became good friends. We went to Vegas together and all that. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with everybody. I don't. I don't have no enemies out there. I. Uh, I have fun. I feel like in this world there is. Uh, there's enough that everybody can make it. So um, I do wish that other people would would help others out. Um, I feel like I've helped quite a few keep moving forward. I do get a lot of people that shit on me. Uh, it's basically because you know I'm moving up in the ranks higher and faster than other people are. But it's just because I put in the work and. Uh, and I know what I want to do in my life, and uh, I have goals and and uh, ambition to keep moving forward. Hell 
Oh yeah, man. Hell yeah. Well, Justin, hey man. Um, I'll, first off, I want to thank you for coming on the live feed tonight, man. I know, especially with your social media and stuff. And I, I didn't know you did all that shit, man. You must be busy as hell, man. So it's I do time to come busy. out, man. I so appreciate it, man. Um, you're. I've been a fan of yours. It's a couple of years ago when you came in, for sure. I love how you interact with your fans and social media and how you talk shit. And you're one of the realest guys. Like you're not. You're definitely not faking it for TV, for sure. Um, so. Again, thank you for coming on. Um, I met your old man in Minnesota last year. You weren't around at the time, but I'll be at that first race in Ohio this year, so I'm definitely going to come meet you. and ah, Come hang out. No. Uh, guys, he's making me get off. It's not me wanting to get off. <laughs> we can stay on. Huh? We can he's, stay on. Huh? Stay on. Huh? He's kicking me off. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to no. get messages. Why the hell did you get off so fast? I just got on. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get messages saying uh, from your fucking fans, be like, "Why? Why? How'd why you make this get off? You fucking asshole!" Uh, so, but uh, we, we don't gotta get off. We can stay on, man. I can stay on all night. I don't care. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm only gonna. I just gotta edit videos. Once I get off here, I'm gonna be in the shop. I'll probably be out here for probably another three or four hours, uh, just getting video content edited up and getting everything ready to go. Yeah, um, we probably I stay on here for a couple more minutes. Um, where are we at? An hour and seven? Hell yeah, we got. We'll probably go to hour ten. You got three more minutes, guys, to so get y'all's questions in. I'll uh, I'll stay on here and uh, answer as many questions as I can. I'm pretty much an open book, so I'll kind of answer. Are you going to go to a roots? Uh, I can't get down to roots weight, so I'll never go to a roots. Where's big country? Um, he's probably asleep. It is ten 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 here right now. He was on the chat like five minutes ago. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, he was in here. Did you bond with anyone in particular down under? Does a bear shit in the woods? <laughs> Will you ever put sponsors on the car? I'm pretty sure I have the sponsors on the car. Big one, yeah. What happened to your film guy, Justin? Um, he actually had to have surgery on his leg, um, so he is out of commission, and he won't start until May. Um, so there is some content that I email over to him, and I have him edit, put it back together, and we get it out. Uh, but uh, for the most part, uh, I've been I handle everything and I've been slowly transitioning him in on how I do things, on how I make my post and moving forward um, so he can help me out this year. Um, but he won't come on and be full time until May. Uh, he is out of North Carolina. I'm going to relocate him to Florida and uh, he will be with me moving forward. Uh, how's the weather in Florida? Hot and muggy. Would you grudge race Lyle Barnett and Stevie Fast? Um, yes, I would. Uh, I've grudge raced Stevie Fast plenty of times. Are you still looking for a driver? Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and talk about this because I made a post talking about I was going to do a lease program, and I'm still going to do it. Just right now, my other car is not going to be ready. I am leasing a program for somebody to rent or lease if it's in the post that you will have to pay to be able to have the program and drive you will show up you will drive you will leave i am giving you a whole program a tuner crew guys everything all you gotta do is show up and drive so no i am not looking for a driver just to get in the car and drive uh can you beat ryan this time i beat ryan last time So, when are you going to test in Orlando? Uh, here in a couple weeks, we're going to start testing the car. Uh, 350K in escrow. You definitely got to do that. If you go out there and fuck the car up, wreck it, or do whatever, we got to be able to fix it. Would you like to own a team and have drivers? Yes, that is my ultimate goal with this deal. Um and moving forward, it, Cali Mills is still a swan gang. But, yes, uh, my goal is to be able to be a team owner, have cars, and uh, have drivers. Uh, are you going on Billy's podcast? Uh, if he asked me to come on there, maybe I'll do it. I don't do a whole lot of podcasts, guys. Uh, I, uh, I, pr I stay pretty busy and keep moving forward. 
Um, he reached out at the right time, and I just so happily seen the message. I said, let's do it. It took us you know, a while to get to this point. I was very busy, and I had a lot of things going on, but he was able to work around my schedule, and we finally were able to come out and do it. Yeah. What's the best dish that BC makes? I mean, I, he's a great cook. Uh, that's another deal. We're doing a, a, a cooking channel with BC, so that's going to come back out. Um, we're just, and that's, that's one thing that, you know, my new guy, video editor, he's going to be able to help me out and do that too. It, it just got to the point where it's outgrown me. Uh, yes. I'll give everybody a notice when I test in Orlando. Anytime I test, everybody's allowed to come out and have fun and, and watch. Um, I just tell people to be respectful. Um, just know that we are there to test, um, and that I, I'm pretty busy. Uh, I guess hitchhiker is a sore subject. No, it's not a sore subject. What's what's wrong? What's the issue? Um, yeah, Cheyenne, she had she had some other obligations, and we we talked it over, and she she moved on. There's no more to it. Uh, how about a shirt you signed for me? Okay, sounds good. Why didn't you stay with the Liberty? Liberty's getting hit with weight this year. How's the red tide in coming down in Clearwater in June? Um, I don't get to go out to the beach a lot, so I couldn't tell you. Uh, hey, Justin, I, I recently found your social media. You got a new fan for like Tony G. Shout out to you, man. Appreciate it. Um, I like to have fun. I like to I like to race. Um, I like to talk shit. And uh, and and that's about it. So are you and Kyle still buddies? Yeah, we just went ate dinner a couple weeks ago. Still sunburnt? Yes, I am very sunburnt right now. It's to the point now where the shirt and stuff don't hurt, but it's uh, definitely still pretty rough. Yeah, that's the worst. Uh, so where's the Swan Gang wall in the shop? So that's part of the room that we're building. So that outside wall that you see right there, we are getting it all decorated up. Shout out to everybody. And then everybody that wants to be on the Swan Gang wall art, um, you will uh, be able to – people that's already paid for a spot, you automatically be on there. But if you want to pay for a spot, you can. You'll be inside the shop, and you'll be there for life. Uh, fitted hats are coming back soon. Best place to vacation in Florida. Depends on what you want to do, uh, but I would say either Clearwater, St. Pete, Orlando, or Fort Lauderdale. When do you think side piece will be ready? I'm not sure. The Mustang will be back uh, in May. Um, yes, we're going to do a shop hangout. We'll invite people over to come hang out in the shop. Uh, we got all kinds of merch coming out this year. Just stick around. So... Um, like I see, like this is where I get bad because I'll sit here and answer everybody's questions. What's the website, Justin, where they can go buy merch right now? Uh, you go on our website, www.justinswanstrom69.com. Uh, we are in the process of moving some things around on the website. We have a lot of new hats coming out, like this hat here. It's not been released yet. A lot of people have been liking it; they want it. Um, but uh, so I'm in the process of uh, getting that out here in the next couple of weeks. I will make a post online. We will talk about it once we get the site and everything. Uh, updated. So, Justin, nobody in MPK puts out more content than you do. You are a grinder for sure. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you, man. Dude, there's so many coming in. See you in Ohio. Okay. Oh, it's in that. What color is pre up going to be? It's going to be green. Murder Nova is an awesome to hang out with. Uh, being out there for five and a half weeks out there, dude, he's funny as shit. And like I said, we're all on a group chat now, and we still text to this day. Uh, so. But uh, anyways, guys, I appreciate it. Um we got a lot of stuff coming out this year, podcasts, new channels, new merch. Uh, we got cool things. We got, we're going to try to hit every single race. Uh, my game plan, like I've always said, is to hit every race, try to make sure it's entertaining for y'all. Um, something seriously, seriously, seriously would have to happen for us to miss a race. Um, but uh, for the most part, I have a good record so far on making every single race. 
Uh, would you ever put radios back on? Man, uh, Street Outlaws keeps us so busy that I don't even know if I have time to put radios back on for what we got going on. So, see if I have. have a great night. Great interview. Hey, Brett, appreciate it. Uh, see you in Minnesota. So, I think that's about it. Justin does a couple of times. Jim Howe. All right, Justin. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. And I uh, will see you soon, man. I appreciate it. See you. See you. See you guys.